and we'll give some information about this country as well. First of all, uh, first of all, my, uh, my thing has disappeared. Let's see if I... No, that didn't do it. Let's see if I stop sharing, then share the whiteboard again. Okay, that should do it. So the population. is measured in millions and I don't know if we're going to really have time to worry about initial conditions so let's just solve what we've got. Um, this is separable DP over P times 200 minus P equals K DT. We can integrate both sides. Um, Sadly, integrating the left is kind of a hassle. This is the, the most complicated sort of integration technique we're going to use in this class, and it's the last time we're going to use it, but to do this integral, we need a partial fraction decomposition. You might or might not remember from calculus two. I think I heard that uh, Mr. Saloon in his probability class sometimes uses these. So if you've forgotten, it would be maybe good to brush up. We can multiply both sides by the denominator of that fraction. And then the so-called heavy side method is, this is true for all values of P, so it should be true specifically when P is 200. And that gives you B is one two hundredths. And it should be true when P equals zero. And this is a, in general, there is no reason that A and B should be the same, but this is a feature of um, 
This is a feature of the logistic model that A and B are going to be the same. And once you have A and B, that's one over 200 times one over P plus one over 200 times one over 200 minus P DT, remember, not DP, DP. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this and I'm breaking it into parts. This is the partial fraction decomposition. Equals K D T. And I'm integrating both sides. And the point of all of this is that I can now pull this out. All right, and I can integrate these, or at least I hope I can integrate these. One over P is the natural log. This requires a quick U substitution that's going to turn that addition into subtraction. On the right, KT plus C. Multiply both sides by 200. It always seems a little arbitrary. I mean, K is an unknown constant. So you could argue that 200 K is an unknown constant in exactly the same way that 200 C is an unknown constant, but we're not going to make that argument. 200K, we'll just write that down, whereas 200C, we'll still write as C. Let's see. Population is positive. So we don't need that absolute value. Let's assume that the population, I said we wouldn't uh, worry about initial conditions, but let's say that the population is initially 100. Then the population initially being 100, how is do that 200 minus P is also going to be positive? And that comes from this fixed point analysis. If the population starts less than 200, it's just going to increase towards 200. It's not going to jump over it. 
always a blessing when you can get rid of absolute values. They are a pain to work with. And now, at this point, we have some kind of ugly algebra. We, um, we can combine the natural logarithms on the left-hand side. Again, this is the kind of thing we teach in, you know, algebra, but, but because it never gets used for much, it's easy to forget that one logarithm minus another logarithm is the same as a logarithm of a quotient. Exponentiate both sides. Speaking of things we do in college algebra, and then it's years before we see them again, solving exponential equations, solving logarithmic equations, um, we do that using exponentiation. E to the natural log equals E to this. On the left, the E and the natural log cancel out. On the right, addition inside the power turns to multiplication using our exponent rules. <sighs> e to the power of C, I mean, we don't really care about C, C is just a constant, E to the C is just a constant, let's call that D. Yeah. Now we, it's a hassle, a person, it, it comes early in the semester, which I think is a shame because in my opinion, this is, this is the part of the class I like least and I hate for students to think it's all going to be like this because it isn't. This is probably the most writing we'll do. Um, but multiply both sides by that denominator. Now we're going to take the thing with a P in it and we're going to add it to the left. So this equals 200 D E to the 200, right? Right. Pull a P out. And divide. And we've sort of solved for P. 
about sort of nothing we have solved for P, but there's one traditional step that we do, which is that we're going to take this fraction and we're going to divide top and bottom by that thing I just circled. In the denominator, when we divide that, it will turn into one. Meanwhile, one over D lowercase e to the 200 kt can be rewritten as a constant e times Euler's constant e to the negative 200 kt. And we wind up with this. And as I say, if we wanted to get rid of that capital E and get rid of that lowercase k, we need to be given more information about the country. We need to be given initial conditions. We don't have time for that, class ends in five minutes, so I'm going to just very quickly throw on the board. Let's see. Now, Desmos do this, Desmos will do this. P equals, here's what these equations look like. And of course, Desmos won't like it if I give it A's and capital E's. So I will um, fill in values. So this is the logistic equation. And we see the, the behavior that we predicted from the fixed points. The population started less than the carrying capacity. So the population increases towards the carrying capacity. This is the logistic graph, a very famous graph that shows up in all sorts of situations. I will leave you here. Uh, next week we'll look at we'll look at air resistance, which is maybe also a bit of this using separation of variables to solve messy equations. But after that, we'll leave this behind us and look at hopefully more edifying things.